Welcome to the example for linear correlation and regression about bare chest size and weight. Listed below are the chest sizes in inches and weights and pounds of randomly selected bears that were anesthetized and measured. Because it is more difficult to weigh a bear than to measure its chest size, the presence of a correlation could lead to a method of estimating weight based on chest size. For example, you can weigh bears if they're in the zoo or something like that, but it's hard to measure a bear in the middle of the woods. So if there's a correlation, um, what you can do is you can kind of put the bear to sleep and then measure around its chest and then you could find a predicted weight for that. So anyways, the first thing that we're going to do is find the value of the linear correlation coefficient r. So we're going to go ahead and type on all the data into StatCrunch and we're going to perform some calculations. So the data is uh, 26, 45, 54, 49, 35, 41, 41, 49, 38, 31. Then the weight is 80, 344, 416, 348, 166, 220, 262, 360, 204, and 144. You might want to pause the video if you need more time to type them in. So for, I'm going to rename the variable one column X and the header of the variable two column Y. This will, will help us later on. Next, to perform the linear regression, we go to stat and then we go to regression and we're going to perform simple linear regression. I'm going to choose the X variable X. The Y variable is going to be Y. Leave everything the same and hit compute. Now, according to this, our correlation coefficient r is going to be the is going to be 0.98. So I'm going to write that down on my paper while I'm reading it out. 0.9832896.2. Now, back to our problem. Next, we need to determine whether there is significant linear correlation between the chest size of a bear using the significance level of 0.05. So H sub O is going to be rho, remember, equals 0. So that means assume no linear correlation. I like the words in this problem as well as the symbols because I think it helps us in the understanding. H sub A then would be rho does not equal zero. So this means some linear correlation exists. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to both do both the traditional method and the p-value method. So in the traditional method, we're going to go ahead and find the critical value, R and we're going to look that up on the table. The two things that we need to know, remember, are going to be n, which is the sample size. So how many bears were there? There's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bears. So n is 10, and we said alpha was 0 0.05. So let's go ahead and look this up on our chart. On our chart, we look at the second column, alpha 0 0.05. We go down to the row where n is 10 and we're going to get 0.632 and remember this is going to be plus and minus since it's going to be two tails the critical values are back to our problem now according to the traditional method okay on the traditional method if we look at the traditional method i'll write it up here a little bit we look at the scale here from negative 1 to positive 1, 0 being in the middle. The critical values are positive 0.632 and negative 0.632. Those are our critical values. Then according to the uh, correlation coefficient 0.98, okay, this is our R value, our correlation coefficient. Remember, according to our scale, this signifies there's going to be positive linear correlation. Okay, positive linear correlation. So 
on our p-value method, okay, on our p-value method, we're going to find the test statistic and the p-value. So let's go back to StatCrunch to find those. So according to the p-value method, we, coin, we can go ahead and look. Remember, we're going to be looking at the slope row here, not the intercept row. Our t-test statistic is going to be 15. 0.277077 and our p-value is going to be less than 0 0.0001 or you can say zero. So then our decision. Remember um, back in the last chapter with hypothesis testing, if our p-value here, zero, is less than our significance level, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So if we're rejecting the null hypothesis, remember the null hypothesis was row equals zero. So if we reject that fact, that means we don't, that's not right. And so that means some linear correlation is going to exist. And that just kind of verified us in the traditional method as well. So remember in, this is also the rejection region between the critical value and one in the traditional method. Okay, so now our statement. So according to our statement, we're going to say the following. We're going to say the sample data, because remember the sample is just those 10 bears. And we're gonna use the word does, okay? Because we rejected it, does provide sufficient evidence or enough evidence to suggest now what type of linear correlation? A positive linear correlation so that word positive is important correlation exists between and this is the two variables. So this is going to be between, I'll write it in a different color here. So this, remember, x was the chest size and the y was the weight. So between the bear's chest size and, let me move it up here, and the bear's weight, Let's put the units in here too. So the bear's chest size is in, I think it's in inches. So it's in inches and the bear's weight is in pounds. So make sure you include the units at our alpha level 0 0.05. So we're getting closer to being done. So now remember this includes from both all these sections that we've covered before. So now we have to find the regression equation. Back to StatCrunch. Our regression equation is going to be right here with the y equals, the y equals. So remember, I'm not gonna use y, I'm gonna use y hat. So it's gonna be y hat equals, and I just can copy this down, negative 251.94787 plus 12.380144x. Remember, I can rewrite it in that order, or I can put the 12.380144x first. Just make sure the x goes with the 12. Also, while we're on the screen, remember what you can do is if you, if you wanted to go to the right, right arrow, you can see that the dots here are close to the line. So we knew that there's pretty, a pretty good strong correlation since the dots are fairly close to that line. Let's go back and find the predicted value. The last question says, find the predicted value of a bear that has a 50 inch chest size. Show substitution. So here, this is indicating that X is going to be 50. So I'm going to show the substitution y hat equals negative 251.94, what, 
0.380144, and then we're going to times it by our 50, our calculator. So with our calculator here, we can go ahead and take that number. Let me clear it all out here. That's better. You get 251.94. 4787 plus 12.380144 times 50 and we're going to hit enter and it gives us an answer of 367 let me scoot this over here there you go 367.05933 and don't forget our units because x was the bear's chest size, so a, fifth, a bear that has 50 inch chest size, now will have a weight of 367 roughly pounds. So the units are just as important in these problems. Okay, so you can use the traditional method or the p-value method to perform um, a correlation and regression for this bear example.